Hopefully I've got the whole thing. Okay, um, we're looking at texture and triadic and unity and variety. So to do that, um, I thought that we would um, work with brushes and um, back, creating your own background. Um, and I've got something saved for you up here under files. All right, so let's look at triadic colors first. So you guys that are sitting there, what can you tell me about a triadic color scheme? What do you notice? Anything? Like, like the opposite of well, it's pretty close. Those are called the complements. Are they, diagonal? they are actually a triangle. That's why it's a triadic. So our first set of triadic colors are red, yellow, and blue, which are your primaries. Does that make sense? Because you've got the triangle on your color wheel. So the colors in between red, yellow, and blue are orange, green, and purple, and that's a triad also. So that would be one. And then you go in between that, so it's every three colors become a triad. So if I looked at yellow, green, and counted three over, I'd have red, orange. And if I counted three over, I'd have blue, violet. So that's kind of um, this one, I believe, red, red, orange, blue, violet. So those are your, basically, your triadic schemes. <clears throat> so that is one of the things on that list. The second thing is um, texture and pattern. And there are three kinds of texture. And uh, we won't have actual texture in a digital piece unless we're um, taking our digital pieces and applying them in a collage to a piece and can add other things to it like some hair or bumps or something like that. So we create something that's called implied texture and um, that can look really quite realistic on the computer because this is from an actual texture piece and so are these, but that's not the real, we can't go over there and touch it and have the real texture. So that would be something that you would want to do on the computer. And the other is um, pattern and pattern design. And um, again, it's going to be something that you take and make a pattern through. So I'm not sure what your original pieces that you're working with but I've got um, Photoshop brushes here and I can save them to my computer when I open it up, open it up from the file and click save image as and I want you to do that and save that someplace where you know where you can find it on your desktop. So I'm just going to call that, instead of what it is, I'm going to call it brush. Because I then we'll know those will be brushes that you can save. All right, and that means that all of these other ones, except for I think this last one might be something that I put out there for brush. No, it isn't. All of these are all texture and pattern for texture. So if you decide that you want to work with one of them, like this one looks like leather, right? Doesn't that, or a full leather of some kind, I can right click it and save it as, and um, we'll just call that, it's a PNG, I'll, I'll just call it leather. The other day I had you save uh, pieces of fabric so that you could make patterns and texture as well. So most of these are um, different types of paper that you could pour out and use. So um, I have uh, quite a number of them. You'll have to decide which ones that you might want to work with by opening up. This one looks kind of like um, either cardboard or burlap or some kind, so I'll save that. All right. So the brushes that I have for you here, um, we're going to go file and open the ones that I've saved. Our um, 
a nature pack and you can go online and find an awful lot of brushes that people have made or I'll show you how to make your own brushes so if you take a minute and and go out to Google and um, put in let's see if I can get here plus and go to Google and type in free Adobe brush. It's going to be nice if I could spell brushes. And um, you'll find all kinds of things from trees to splatters to smoke to um, those are pretty cool. But you want to have them where they're divided into a small image like these are all photoshop brushes that you could do that are basically for 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 the lease or decorative of some kind these are smoke ones and that's a really cool smoke one and so is this so if you like something like that you could do that here it seems to be butterflies here's trees I'm going to come and save that image and type in tree. So besides what um, I've got for you, I want you to be able to go and I'll show you how to make your own. So here we are in Photoshop and the first thing that you want to do is if you see what you're doing here, you've got it on layers. And this one is really kind of pretty. That looks like grass. And I'm going to use my marquee tool and uh, select that grass. And then I'm going to go and copy it because we need to have the grass be black in order to make it to a brush. Then I'm going to go new. And we'll set the document to the clipboard there and create. And then edit and paste it into the clipboard. Click OK. All right, so right now I've got um, white with gray. And I don't want the pattern at all in the background. So um, one of the things you could do is come and go to Threshold. And that will set it all to black and white, but still I have it backwards. So to create something so that you know you want the opposite of it, that's called invert. So I'm going to go to adjustments and go to invert. And now I have the black being the um, foreground and the gray being the uh, background and then I can go to adjust to threshold and now I have it pure black and white and then to get rid of the white the easiest way to do that is go to select and select a color range that means I can select all of the white every last little pixel of it and then edit and cut and um, my background is still there so I'll turn it off and look now I no longer have the white there and to make that a brush now I can go edit to define brush preset and we'll just call that grass and now if you actually get a brush that you don't like that doesn't work that is now going to be on your computer under your paint brushes so when I click my paint brush and I go to the last one which is 323 you see that I have the grass there now I can go to any color I want to use so I can go to file new document and um, we're going to change pixels to inches and we're going to change the resolution to our print size 300 and I'll make it 12 by 12 because that's what we did some of our earlier ones so that we've got a good print size and now I can come over here and choose any color at all 
and start making grass and grasses. So I can make red grasses, blue grasses, green grasses, and put them on different layers. View 100%. Come and find it. All right, so now, now I am definitely creating the textures that I want. And I can think about aerial perspective there and um, change colors. So I have maybe some of them green and some of them, um, we know that the warmer colors are going to come forward and the cooler colors are going to go back. So I could come behind them, maybe make my paintbrush just a little bit smaller and put in blue grasses behind. So you could build up something that looks like actual textures with each one of these. And um, the brushes that I've given you here, there's all of them are kind of leaves. There's different leaf things there that this one is called pumpkins. This is maples. Um, the one that I downloaded on my desktop was, was um, tree, I think. Let's go and look for that. Open desktop. There's trees. So um, these trees here, we can make a paintbrush, and I'll show you where you can find other trees that look a little bit more realistic. Um, so again, I'm going to select the tree with my marquee and copy it, and then go new, file to new. There's my clipboard document. My resolution is only 72 there, but I will see what happens. And paste it, and there is the tree. All right, so again, we want to make it as black as possible, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger brush to begin with. So to do that, we use the uh, smart object aspect of your layer here. So I'm going to right click it and create a smart object. And that way when I go to image size, I can make it 300. So at least it will be um, cleaner that way. All right, it already has the white background. So I'm just going to go to image, got to be on the layer, image adjust threshold to make it all black. And then uh, my tree brush takes the shape of a tree. So I can come over into my um, document that we're making texture with and um, find my brushes and put my last one that, no, I forgot to define the brush preset. Edit, define brush preset, tree one, and click OK. And there it is. You zoom out, and I can put in different color trees that I've made from that brush. It is your choice. All right, real trees. I promised real trees. And that's under filter, render, tree. All right, I love uh, this version of Photoshop because of number one, trees, number two, fire, that it'll do both those things, and people have been waiting to do that. So um, you can choose the kind of tree that you want. So you could do a stylized tree. I don't even know what some of these trees are. This one is Spicus Microcarpa. And I click that. That's what it looks like with branches. You can choose the light direction. You can choose how much leaves you want on it. So you can give it more and more leaves. You can choose your leaf size. So right now it's at five. Right now it's covered with green leaves. You can choose your branch height. So you can make your tree taller or shorter. You can choose your branch thickness. So now I can make it have really thick, heavy branches. 
Um, you can go with the default leaves. You could randomize the leaves. You could randomize the arrangement. And this one is all custom and then click OK. So I had pretty realistic looking grasses and things. Now I can have a really realistic tree fit on screen. So if you're going to make a, a piece, it probably helps to make sure that you're on the right layer when you add your tree. Here's my layer. It's on the background here. It's covering up my grass. So I might not want to, to do it on that layer. I can put it on a new layer. So when I put the tree in, I can resize it and put it where I want to do it. Edit, free transform, and then I can make, put my tree with the grass and the texture of whatever you want. That, all right, so then for, you can see my tree is on a transparent layer, and I can click check. I will probably want to put any grass or things with my brushes on its own layer. And then the last thing is if, if I want to put in shapes or how you could build a house or anything with your shapes you want and pour in pattern, then I can come with my texture and come down here and find my um, shape tool, which is underneath the line here. And I'm going to go to a custom shape. Now I'm on my own layer up here, and um, I already have trees, I already have grass, there's a sun, there's another sun, there's clouds, um, you could have animals, let's do a, a rabbit, I've got a pretty big shape tool, he's on his own layer and he's blue, so I'm going to select the blue rabbit. And then I'm going to come and um, go to my paint bucket. And then there's pattern. So I could pour in any of the patterns that are there. Like there's rocks and there's leaves. There's polka dots. All those things are in patterns. But I told you the files that some of them I have here for you are um, different patterns of paper and things like that. So I'm going to open up this one that we um, did as leather and open. All right, and this time I'm going to go to edit and define, instead of defining brush, define pattern. And now I have a pattern called leather. And then I can go into my document with the bunny and go to pattern and go to leather which should be the last thing I did and pour leather into the bunny so you've got patterns that you could make um, and you could do fabric patterns or so you could make animals you could do trees you could make your own brush set I'm not sure what goes with your documents that you've already been making but those are all fun things to try um, to work with and try to remember to keep your colors within red, yellow, and blue or orange, green, and purple or to work with a triadic document. Anybody have questions? All right, so this How would be fun to pick. You, you could do both that usually I'll do something with the gradient because I think it has um, such interesting um, combinations here that would start looking like water um, so maybe not so much within the bright colors but I like the uh, Photoshop photograph gradients you know so it has already shades of blues and um, turquoises and then if I was going to put that into its own layer and do a gradient, hmm, I need to deselect my bunny. Try it again. All right, so there I can have a tree. I can have sky. You know, you can select the area that you're going to do a gradient in. You could come in with your brush and um, take 
grass and um, whatever color that you want to make your grass in. You know, so I have grass that looks like grass. I have ones that look like um, all of these. So you could put that on top and make that. Those are all in your um, file folder in Blackboard. Okay. So you'll have to follow those steps to make whatever you're going to do to make brushes and to make patterns and all of those are there and then with it and then the trees are already there so hopefully with this video then you could make whatever kind of object you like and I love making houses and making them really realistic and using these things for the background and stuff so I think they're a lot of fun but so this will be your last one and then we'll see what we want to print And hopefully that worked, so I'm not sure it did. Come on.